Good morning, welcome back to a brand new video. I mentioned on the community feed that we had a new member of Miracle Mountain and here she is, it's Isabella, a nine-year-old, three-legged, one-eyed dog and she is wonderful. You are my best friend, chill as the weekend. My all the time, partner in crime, always my last kiss, tastes like red. It's an absolutely beautiful morning and before I get into the whole story because it is a pretty mammoth interesting story of how we now have a beautiful rescue dog called Bella. I've just been standing at the lakeside literally probably about five meters away from the otter and just watching it eat all my fish. <laughs> I can be a man, be big and tough for you darling that won't be enough i would learn to move mountains now i learn to part the sea whatever you want whatever you need you're the light in the tunnel when i'm feeling gray you're the sun peeking through on that cold winter day if I could change a thing, you know, nothing would be changed. Cause I love you so, and I'm glad you came. So as you can see, the otter was having an absolutely great time hunting in the lake. And I just watched it eat loads of goldfish, which isn't a problem as long as it doesn't eat my perch, my prize perch. But let's go on to Bella. How did I find Bella, the beautiful rescue dog? She's so cute. She's had a traumatic life. They think that she was hit by a car. So she lost a leg, she lost an eye. And we wanna give her the best possible life here on Miracle Mountain. And I think she's gonna fit in absolutely wonderful with the rest of our animals and our whole vibe here. So I found her online. I was scrolling through Facebook and I saw this post and Bella was absolutely, actually meant to be rehomed to North America. But unfortunately that fell through and that's where we came along and I just couldn't keep scrolling. I had to send a message to a woman called Jackie who runs the rehoming page and we'll leave all of the links in the description. And she was just beautiful and instantly I just knew that she was gonna fit in really well here on Miracle Mountain. And we went straight to see her, I think two days later and we came back with Bella. So our biggest concern at first was whether Bella was okay with cats. And the people at the rehoming center tested her out with some cats that were there and she was totally unbothered, unfazed, uninterested in them, which was perfect for us. So we went to the rehoming center, met Jackie and the wonderful team there, and Bella was there waiting for us. And immediately we just knew that she was gonna fit right in with us right at home here on Miracle Mountain. She is absolutely, adorable <laughs> and she gets around really well on only three legs we had a tour around the rehoming center the work they do there is really nice the space for the dogs is excellent i'm not gonna lie it felt really tough to not leave with 50 dogs <laughs> But we did go home with Bella that day. We put her in a crate in the back of the truck and she was so calm, so well behaved. And it was the perfect start to our new life with Bella here. And we couldn't wait to introduce her to everyone the next day. So we got Bella back to our new home here at Miracle Mountain and she was settling in so well. She traveled in the car perfectly fine. And then we introduced her to the goats she was completely unfazed and unbothered by the cat and the goats and also the chickens. A lot of people had said be wary about the chickens because of the breed of dog she is. She's a, a hunting dog so she's used to hunting small mammals like rabbits and hares and things like that so their instinct is just to go and kill them things. So luckily she's very relaxed in that department but I made a big mistake the next morning. We went for a walk, two walks in fact, everything went perfectly well, it was wonderful. We were about to go on the third walk, we put her harness on, we put her lead on, and then 
I put the lead on the floor because I just needed to get something out of the front door. The front door was open a little bit. She ran out of the front door, really excited to go on the third walk. But then because we had a big retractable lead, it was banging behind her and she was terrified, thought she was being chased and she absolutely bolted. I had no idea that a three-legged dog could outrun me by a mile. Theo managed to grab hold of her uh, because the lead was still on and the harness, he managed to chase her a whole loop around. Just as she was coming back up, he got hold of the lead, which was great. Unfortunately, she slipped out of the harness, which was not great and an absolute nightmare. At that moment, I had to quickly run back to the house because she'd ran off into the forest and all I had on was a pair of slippers because I'd actually been upstairs before this happened. By the time I came back with my wellies on, she was trotting up to the house, so I shouted to Theo, I've got her, she's here! Uh, but because at this point she was absolutely terrified because of what happened, this thing had chased her through the property, she was too scared to come anywhere near me and ended up running straight past the house and up into the forest. Now we live on a mountainside in a forest, so I ran as fast as I could after her. I didn't want to scare her by running after her, but I needed to keep my sight on her. Unfortunately, I lost sight of her just past the wildlife pond, which was an absolutely terrifying experience because now she was gone into the forest completely on her own and we could not figure out where she had gone. This was our worst nightmare and we felt absolutely awful. So after speaking to lots of our friends, it's apparent that this is a thing that happens. A rescue dog as well, you don't know their triggers, you don't know what they've been through in their past life. So it is like taking on a project and we will get her into the best possible shape we can. But this didn't help at the time because knowing that everyone else had had the same thing happen to them kind of softened the blow a little bit, but we still didn't have beautiful Bella back. She was out on the mountain on her own. So what we did is we spoke to our friends Dom and Chad and they've got four dogs are really good at tracking other dogs they came to here with those dogs and we went up into the mountain and we tried to track Bella for scent best possible way we could and it was absolutely nothing so at that point we knew that she wasn't on the property so the search was now on. We were fairly confident that Bella was not on Miracle Mountain. So what we did was we contacted Jackie, who was uh, Bella's foster mom. She sent us a really good voice recording that we could blast out to try and lure Bella back from wherever she'd gone. We also contacted the people that we rescued baby from, Quasmi, and they have a really big online presence. So they created a, uh, oh, what would be the word? An online post. <laughs> so they created a post that we could share and everyone shared in the area to keep an eye out for Bella. We put posters up absolutely everywhere and two nights passed and we got a tip off. She was not on the mountain for sure. She was actually seen on the outskirts of a village, which actually shocked us because this was pretty far away. She'd made some real moves. She must have been super terrified, but now we knew an area that we could pinpoint down to try and find Bella. So we went to that village and I spoke to some really, really kind guys and people in the cafe and handed out posters in that specific village. And all we could do then was wait. So as well as handing out flyers, we kind of mapped a complete circle around Miracle Mountain and we flyered and posted around that area. So anywhere she went, someone might have seen her. If they'd seen the poster, they would know that she was missing. I even took the high looks up all of the mountain tracks right up in the mountain like some really sketchy driving situations, but I was determined that I was gonna find her. Unfortunately, absolutely nothing. But then we got another tip off from a lovely guy who called B from the number on the poster and said, she's right in the middle of the village next to the church. So we dropped everything and we headed straight there and we managed to get her back and it just felt absolutely incredible to have Bella back on the property and now we can start the work of easing her into life on Miracle Mountain because she is very nervous 
it's nerve wracking enough coming from a shelter and everything she's been through, hit by a car, lost a leg, lost an eye. But then to go through all of that as well, it's just another thing on top. So our job now is to give her everything she requires, take her for beautiful walks, get her used to all of the sounds of the deer barking and the other wildlife, like the wild boar and stuff like that, because you can tell when we're walking her around, she's, she's very aware. She can see things that we have no idea are even there. So we're looking forward to her coming out of her shell and being by our side with the whole family. She's already walking around with us and the cat. And it's really nice. If you're wondering why all of the clips she's wearing a harness with the labels still on, <laughs> <laughs> that is because we bought a harness that's a little bit too big and we want to get a smaller one so we want to return that one because it wasn't cheap but yeah we have her back and we're feeling really good and she's settling in really nicely and we have a gps tracker oh <laughs> we have a gps tracker that we had all the way along our plan was to put the gps tracker straight on her and take her out for her first walk unfortunately you just get wrapped up in everything and we were like well, we're just walking her around a loop on our private road around the lake and she's going to be absolutely fine she's on a lead but no now we're walking her with a better harness and two leads and making sure that basically if she does freak out she can't just escape and we can calm her down take her back to the house resettle her and go again it's going to take time she's going to come out of her shell We've done it with the goats, we've done it with all of the other animals we've rescued and we're confident that she is going to fit in so well to our family here. Dog Rehoming Portugal, EU and UK works alongside municipal kennels in Tomar to get dogs adopted in Portugal, EU and the UK. We witnessed firsthand the love and attention they give to the animals in their care. So if you're interested in supporting their work or adopting an animal, please click the link in our description. I have some very good news. Look at the pond. It is looking absolutely amazing. It is full. It is ready for the overflow pipes and I nearly took a step too far then. Basically, I'm just warming up the excavator behind me and then I can start clearing some trees and some roots, digging them out and getting ready to dig the trench for the overflow pipe. We need to change the bucket over so Theo's going to carry it. Which one is he using? The one with teeth. Yeah. It's such a simple process swapping the bucket over as well. I'm sure we've shown it before, but I'll show it again today. Is it heavy? <laughs> Good exercise, at least. So this is the first tree that needs to come out. It's a dying peach tree. We're gonna remove them from this field anyway. And the digger makes very light work of it. It's actually kind of crazy to see.
Sophia was just removed, one, two, three. Two were totally dead, one was pretty much dead trees, as you can see here. And they were basically in the line of where the piping needs to go and they needed removing anyway. So this is gonna be the overflow pipe going all the way from there across to that drainage bit there. So here is the beginning of the overflow digging. Now, obviously we're not gonna start directly from the edge of the pond because it'll just all leak out. So he's gonna do the whole trench first and do the last bit right at the end. If you've ever wanted to learn a new language, let me tell you about my experience with Rosetta Stone. Something a lot of people don't know is that I actually really enjoy watching K-dramas. They're my guilty pleasure and whenever I have any spare time, my favorite thing to do is to curl up in front of the telly and watch the latest one. So that's made me really want to visit South Korea in the future. And I don't wanna go there and not know any of the language at all. Rosetta Stone has been absolutely fantastic for kickstarting my language learning journey. Their dynamic immersion approach is unlike anything else. It's truly immersive. Instead of just memorizing translations, you learn naturally through a combination of pictures, native speaker audio, Kyung. Kyung and interactive activities. The Rosetta Stone app lets me take my language learning on the go. Whether I'm out and about, relaxing at home, or hanging out with the animals, I can squeeze in quick lessons anytime. It's super flexible and fits right into my day, so I'm always progressing, no matter where I am. By using our link in the description, you can get more than 50% off their lifetime 25 language offer, which gives you lifetime access to all of the languages on their app, or you can use their lifetime one language offer. It is a great long-term investment, so don't hesitate. I think he's just gonna see how deep he needs to actually go. That's a good depth. Obviously, I don't have any lasers on the digger or anything like that. The only laser I've got, I need to use at night. So I'm kind of just eyeing this up. I could do it kind of old school with basically like a pipe, a see-through pipe with water, but I can just eye this up, get it thereabouts and then just grade the trench all the way to the river where this overflow is gonna run into. So I'm about at depth there. Oh really? So there's a huge stone here is just battling against, let's see. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that is a big stone. Oh, that noise is horrific. My teeth. This might mean that we have to change the course possibly. From here, it's hard to tell. But I think it's a bit of a mammoth stone. It's massive. That boulder is massive. So Theo is gonna have to start again. He's just filling the trench back in that he just dug. Thankfully he wasn't too far in, so it's not much time wasted, but it's way too big 
to dig through it's way too big to get out so it makes sense to just kind of move over a little bit and start again hopefully we don't hit another one i mean when he dug this whole pond nothing like that happened so fingers crossed the next trench is smooth <laughs> to go and make some lunch and I've come back and Theo has actually smashed it <laughs> he's made an amazingly perfect trench for the piping all the way to the stream that goes here and I did see oh yeah there's a huge stone in the way so the trench started off so neat and tidy absolutely perfect the grade was lovely just dropping down a couple of inches every meter and then I hit this and then from then on I just kept hitting stone after stone after stone there's another stone here and that's why this looks so much wider and messier because I had to dig around the stones pull them out the size of the stones come over here That's one oh stone. Gosh. It's a big stone I that pulled out. Massive. But the others, they're not budging. So I think what I'm going to have to do is bring the angle grinder down. I've got a big angle grinder, stone blade, and just chisel and chip away at the stone to be able to get the pipe through. And it gets deep. So right here is the riverbed. It's not flowing at the moment because it's all to do with the lake. Once the lake is full, this is absolutely flowing. I've been here on this property when we've had rain. And if you stood in the way, you might not survive. It's like proper rapids. In this is rapids, I remember seeing it before. <laughs> proper rapids. This is the end of it. So it's obviously a lot thinner and doesn't really look like a riverbed. I've dug out right into it. I've channeled out into it and there's a big culvert pipe here that runs away. So all the water is going to run from the pond into here and then out and away. Theo's done an amazing job on that trench today. I'm going to leave him to it and take the goatees for a walk into the forest. See if they want to come in. You want to come for a walk, girls? Yeah? Come on then. Oh, I literally just put the chickens in. They've been out all day. Uh, sun sets in like an hour so i like to have them in quite a while before then especially because they like to pop out through the fence but the goats will appreciate a walk through the forest especially there's so many leaves on the ground now and they love old leaves don't you yeah you do come on then Goats are browsers, so they will eat a variety of different food. They will eat leaves on the ground, leaves on the trees. They will eat bark, they will eat weeds, grass, loads of different stuff. So they absolutely love the forest. They love going through the orchards. They do a good job at uh, foraging. Ooh, went down a little pop there. But this is, um, this is the riverbed that Theo was talking about. 
as you can see right now it's dry but there was when the really big flood happened this was like white water rapids i'd never seen anything like it before i'll try and find the footage if i can hi kellys <laughs> and walking the goats gives me a really good chance to just kind of spend time in the forest paying attention to things because a lot of the time when we're walking around the property and stuff we're on our way to do things when i'm out with the goats we're taking it slow sometimes we'll purposefully spend time in specific locations like i'll take them down to the orchards if i want to try and keep some brambles down there and things like that so it's when i've been out with the goats during times like this that i have found things that i didn't know we had it was like when i discovered that we had the pomegranate which i did harvest the other day the one of them split open so i fed it to the chickens because the birds had eaten half of it and then the other one i picked off the tree yesterday so i haven't opened that up yet uh, i'm excited about that but just right here where i am i can see a baby oak growing at the base of this cherry tree and this looks like a self-seeded cherry tree because we've got the cherry orchard there but it's lovely to see new growth like that oak that is like two years old oh, it's a beautiful time of year it really is I think I'm going to end the video there. Thank you so much for watching. It was a really stressful week. <laughs> I'm so happy that we have Isabella back and I'm so happy that she is settling in nicely to life here on Miracle Mountain. I'm looking forward to seeing her really become part of the family and spend the rest of her years here with us because she's nine years old. I did speak to my vet the other day and he said that he had a Pedengo who lived until she was 21, <laughs> which was a massive surprise. I think that's quite rare, but either way, she's a wonderful girl. Happy to have her here and thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next video.